sauce that made you feel like, okay, there's someone out here looking out for me. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you uh, for the compliment. I appreciate it. Um, has there ever felt like somebody's been looking out for you? Like, you know, there's you know, the spiritual team, there's like guardian angels, whatever, your ancestors looking out for you. Have you ever felt a time where that was not there? Like, kind of felt like it was alone. And I remember um, the last time I felt like that was when I was at my doctor's office, really, and I had an electrode stuck right here. So, but before I get into that, you didn't come here for the story time, unless you did, but I'm gonna save that part till the end. But we are here for five mistakes that you could be making with your ancestor altar. Number one, and I'm on YouTube and Facebook Live and TikTok. Number one, you think you and your ancestor altar are separate. So, here is where, you know, I have different sets of audience. Some of me like, just give it to me straight up, no chaser, don't leave out the fluff. And for those who like to have detail, I'm gonna give you detail. But for the straight up, no chaser, the, the truth of the matter is, is that the altar, your ancestors are not on the altar. You are your ancestors. Like you are the altar, ultimately. But some kind of way, we kind of lost confidence on us being the altar. So we need to put tools in place to help us along the way, i.e. ancestor altar. So just know that, you know, it's not the tablecloth. It's not the trinket. It's not this. It's actually you are the altar because you have the DNA. That doesn't have the DNA. You have the DNA. So if you want to know how to make grandma's sweet potato pie this past holiday season or, you know, get that business deal done like your uncle did that passed away, you ultimately have to be able to be vulnerable and receive and turn whatever it needs to be turned off, off, and whatever needs to be turned on, on, if that makes sense. Hi, Nefertiti. Thank you for joining. Hi, Michael. Thank you always, Michael. Thank you so much for your support. So I want you to understand that that ultimately you are the altar. But for those of us who need tools, and, and I'm included, I'm no exception, we have the ancestor altar. So just know that at the end of the day, this. And, then, and that brings me to a story about epigenetics. So there was, I think it was Harvard or Yale, one of those. They did a story with some rats, okay? So they put the rats in the maze and they had fruits and whatever, vegetables or whatever here on this side of the maze. So the rats go around and be like, yo, I'm hungry. Let me go to where that fruit and vegetable is. And I'm like, okay, let's just go back. And, and it was like, okay, cool. We're gonna put some cranberries, and this is for example, because I don't know the exact fruit. We're gonna put some cranberries over here, but we're gonna attach electrodes to it so that every time they bite it, they get a shock. So the rats are going around and they'll say, oh, this cranberry is something new. I like it, it's delicious, let me see. Oh, snap, that's an electric fruit. Let me, let me, wait a minute now. And they, they realize that every time they ate that particular type of fruit, that they got a shock. So it is like, damn, I'm like this. I don't, this is not, this doesn't feel good. It's not good. So what happened was, is their nose developed certain receptors that when they smelled the cranberries, they knew they didn't need to eat it. Now here's the kicker. The kicker is they was able to pass those receptors to their children. So that when their children were put in the maze, they smelled the cranberries. They didn't even bother it. It was like, I don't. I don't know what's wrong with, I don't know. It's just, just not feeling that. And I just, they just don't eat it. They don't, I don't know. I don't eat it. I don't want to eat it. I don't want to eat it. It smells funny. I don't know the room. It's crazy. I don't know. Maybe because it's yellow or something. They didn't eat it. And that is your form of epigenetics. So whether you're trying to turn something on or off, just know that you are the altar at the end of the day, not the ancestor altar. But we, again, we need tools to get to, where we need to go so we're confident until we don't need that anymore okay number two 
call your helpers only. Like, we all love our, our, our peoples. But I, I got to tell you a secret. A personal secret. No, not everyone. Hey, hello, Michael. Do you want to come on? Not everyone in my family likes me. Not everyone in your family may like you. So I understand that, okay, you want them all together cool. You save that for like All Hallows Eve or So Wayne or the Day of the Dead or Spirit Day, like when the veil is the thinnest and you can, they can all feast and eat or New Year's or even when you have your own family reunion, which would be so cool if you had your own family reunion and did the ancestors. I can't today. Okay, whenever you're ready, Michael, I got a space right here for you. Um, so when you do your own ancestor altar, you know, at the family reunion, that would be bomb if we get, could get to that point. But what I'm saying is that when it's like those, but for the daily, like, in between a year throughout consistent you want those who can help you you want to call those who can help you you want to be specific you don't want to call someone who doesn't like you you want to call people who are who can help you or have the genes and qualities you like unlike my significant other at the time i think it was back in 2014 and i was with uh a, my significant other at the time when we had an ancestor party in fact, this is the same lover I talk about in my Tantra course who who was one of the reasons why I got into Tantra, which is funny. So if you are interested in learning that, go ahead and sign up for the wait list. I'm going to let release those class dates uh, next year in 2024. So those who are on the wait list can be the first to know. You check out the link in the bio or check out the link below in the description. So we had the ancestor party okay we had the tablecloth we had the you know the nine dishes we had the nine candles nine of this nine of that and the music was going we had a drummer you know i may already made food for the drummer so i wasn't stressed and it was just a, you know got the, all the condiments we were going and it's nice and we invited my side and he invited his side it was like yay yay and then you know, you know everything was over day two day three it's like see a man hanging out in the kitchen i mean i know nobody's in the kitchen because i'm just here but i see a man hanging around in the kitchen and i, and I go to her it's like for some reason i see like a man is right there in the kitchen you know yeah that's you know it felt like my uncle was hanging around uh uh here a little bit i say you talking about the uncle that doesn't look like you he said, yeah, I said, why would he hang around? Because I invited him to the answer. To, why would you invite someone who didn't even like you in life? <laughs> like, seriously, I got stories. But invite him here when we're trying to, you know, get stuff done. And he's like, say, honey, don't invite people that help you, not hinder you. Save it for another time. There's a time and place for me. That wasn't the time. But the point was... He learned that lesson. Close that loop. The second point is, which is number three for a mistake you could be using, you could be doing if you are having an ancestor altar or ancestor altar mistakes in general, is that you don't give them a time limit. Like you have to give them a time. Oh, they will hang out. They will hang out. <laughs> they will hang out and snoop and be like, oh, what she got going on or what this? And you're like, what are all these bumps coming from all of a sudden? Why all of a sudden the purse just falls off the table, like, and people are just looking at you and you're like, okay, that's just, they're like, okay. The thing is, you got to tell them, hey, once this is done, go back to the abode in which you came. Once this candle goes out, go back to the abode in which you came. Once this plate gets taken away, go back to the abode in which you came. Once... I don't know, the music is off, go, some type of marker or time so they can like go, otherwise you'll just have him hanging out like his uncle was hanging out. And yeah, yeah, so that's number three. Give them a time limit. Number four, okay, this one is kind of a huge one. Do not mix the living with the dead. So 
if you have pictures, like the bare minimum of an ancestor altar, bare minimum, white tablecloth, picture, water, bare minimum. I'm talking about bare bones. And then, you know, you may have a candle after that for like fire, the way you cover all the elements, but still bare minimum. So when you have that uh, and you have your ancestor altar, you don't want to have pictures of someone who's alive with someone who's dead. It's kind of like, you know, you would never, you would never have a picnic, put your house in the cemetery, would you? I mean, there's, you know, everything has its own season, right? Everything has its space. It's kind of the same type of line. So everything that's for the living, don't mix it with the, the dead stuff. There's a reason, okay? Including pictures. Pictures are normally the most for people faux pas. And then fifth one, final one, and that is get some type of mentor, guru, class, uh, some type of someone who's done it before, who's done it for a while that you can get uh, information from and more do's and don'ts. Which is speaking, I'm hosting an ancestor class free for you to talk about more about these do's and don'ts uh also we're going to do, walk you through it set you up one if you are if that's what you're interested in whether your house is big or small go over those things and some q a that is free you can check out the link in the bio or in the description furthermore if you want to know how to communicate with your ancestors using ob or the dowsing rods that's going to be in the advanced class right after the free class and you can get to recording and i have free complimentary gifts for those who want the recording and attend the class uh, details again are in the link below so that's happening in december december 17th 18th december 8th december okay so Getting you an ancestor, some type of ancestor knowledge, some a uh, 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 spiritual leader, a guru is a good thing. It helps you avoid a lot of the pitfalls, like a mentor. So bringing back to what I was saying, sometimes uh, the last time I felt like I was alone when I was in the doctor's office and I had some electrodes in my arm, I was at my symptometrist doctor. And the electrodes was actually acupuncture needles, and he, he hooked it up to electricity, girl. He just he hooked it up to some apparatus. I, I felt it, and I, I and I I go there annually to you know recalibrate and everything. I just had a foot bath where they pull out that metals and go out of your feet. Did some MMS. I had a foot massage with uh, what's his name, Saraswati, Senyata Saraswati's wife. She was there and she was doing reflexology. I said, sure, I'll support. She was there. So I did all this work and then my son was getting work done too. We, you know, we just do it annually, just stay healthy. Now I remember I was doing it because I was on a dowsing adventure about to head back to Atlanta, because this was in Salem, about to head back to Atlanta about, let's say, uh, I want to say the fall around the September time frame. So on the way back, we stepped out of the Georgia Divide Stones, and that was when I was able to do some dowsing and learn about the energies there and do some work there. So I was just spending that there. And, you know, I usually do the opening, the projection, and I did the closing. I was a novice at this time. I'm, I'm going to admit that I was a novice at the time. And I was going to do some closing. I did the closing and everything like that, but I forgot to ground. I forgot to like clean off. And so I'm supposed to check. Okay. Yeah. Just checking everything. I was supposed to clean off and I didn't. So I, I got home and I noticed that, you know, my energy was a little off. Like my yes was not my no, my no was not my yes. And I felt a little weird. I was like, yeah, I probably was in that energy just a little bit too long, but I didn't still equate it with needing to clean off yet. That didn't, that lesson didn't come till a couple months later. So I was downstairs and I, 
I was, I, I was, my son was in his room upstairs and I was like, I was downstairs doing something and then I, I, I called to my son and he was like, and he didn't answer. So I started to walk closer to the stairs and I was like, okay, I called for what I was asking for and he gave me a real smart answer. I was like, and then by that time, I was already tired from the drive and then all the work that I did at the, the, the sacred site, the dowsing, you know, when you douse, you only do 15, 20 minutes at a time and then you gotta take a break because it takes so much brain power. Like you literally use both left and right side of the brain. So I was already tired, mentally drained. And then it's like, my son is giving me lip. Oh no, we about to handle that right now. So I started marching up the stairs and his door closed. I was like, oh, no, he didn't close the door on me. So I go open the door and he's laying in the bed. And I was like, how did you get, there's no way you could have got to the bed to the close the door in the amount of time that I was, cause I was almost up at the middle of the stair. I was already at the middle of the stairs already. He said, no, I ain't closed the door. And I was like, and I believed him because, you know, I was like, okay, there's obviously a spirit here. Let's go see what it wants. So I went downstairs and got my rods and I already knew it's just, you know, premonition, the psychicness kicked in. It's my dad. So I'm asking, hey, is my dad? Yes, it's your dad. Okay. Uh, why, why he closed the door? On me? Is he angry at me? Yes. He's like, you're not, you're not cleaning off. You just came from here and you didn't respect the energy there. You, so you, you're not, you closed the portal, which is good, but you didn't clean off. So whatever is on you, I don't want to get it on my grandson. So I closed the door. I was like, oh, okay. Well, it, is there, is there anything you want to speak, speak with, you know, my son about? He's like, no, I'm just going to sit with him. I was like, okay, is there anything you want to talk to me about? No. Can I ask you any questions? No. Can you come hang out with me? No. It was just go with him, protect him. So by then I knew for sure I was not alone because he stepped in even when I didn't even know to think to step in, if that makes sense. Like, It's like, uh, I don't, for lack of a better terms that I could say, like he was there when I didn't even know I needed for him to be there because, you know, the, the Georgia guy stones and ley lines, they, you have to, you have to respect them. And then you have to be aware of what is real, like what that really means and going into it because it's like putting someone who's who's from the back rows of Savannah into New York City Times Square. There's so much stuff going on, so many lights, so many people, so many things you gotta be aware that if you're not used to that, you could be taken advantage of, so to speak. So for then I was grateful because when I became more aware of what's there, you know, I, I realized that when the door closed and I backed off, I was no longer angry because I realized what was going on. And two, I, I just stayed in my room like how I was be doing before because I felt, okay, I'm a little off, so let me just chill out. So that's my story time. And that's when I realized I wasn't, I'm not alone. You know what I'm saying? Like there's, I have a spiritual team, I have ancestors we all have ancestors we all have spiritual teams so i invite you to come uh hang out with me in december december 9th 8 is i know it's not the 19th december 18th at 7 p.m you can check out the link in the bio it is free just to learn and also if you want to learn how to communicate with them using the ob the uh or the dowsing rods, come come join out and hang out with me uh, in the advanced master class for those who get the recording. There's also a special going on with that. So check out the link in the bio or details below. I will see you next time.
like three. 